This is the genetic code that translates a set of three RNA bases into amino acids, and it forms the third part of the central dogma, which is translation of RNA to protein. The way that the genetic code is set up is that each codon, which is a unit of three bases, represents some amino acid sequence. And it needs to be set up in this way because you need to have three in order to cover the diverse group of amino acids that we have access to. Four to the third equals 64. We have four different RNA bases and we have three different opportunities within one codon because each codon has three separate bases within it. That equals 64, which gives us enough diversity to cover all of the 20 amino acids that we need to cover. If it were only two-part codons, then we would end up with 4 to the second, which is 16, and that would not allow us to encode for the 20 amino acids that we have here. And so the way that you read this table, and I, I'll tell you I had a lot of fun producing this, and the good thing is that you don't have to be responsible for this or be able to draw it. The way that you read these is by looking at the first position. So this column represents the first position of the three-part codon, and you read these codons from the five prime end to the three prime end. You have the first part of it here, the second one makes the grid that we have here. So it, for example, this would be C, U, this would be C, C. And then the third position is represented on this right side. And so that's how you read this and you interpret a chart like this, that if you encounter it on the MCAT, it will be provided to you. And the, what you'll notice is that as you're looking through this, you'll start to see that a lot of different codons, a lot of different three base combinations code for the same amino acid. And it's partly because we have 64 possible combinations, but only 20 amino acids. And this helps us arrive at a vocabulary term you might hear, and that is that the genetic code is degenerative. I don't know why they chose the word degenerative, but what it means is that there are several different three base codons that can code for the same amino acid. So for example, phenyl phenylalanine can be coded with U, 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 or U, U, C. Leucine, we have six different ways that you can encode for that, and it could be U, U, A, C, U, G, and so on. And uh, the degenerative code means that there are several different three-member codons that can code for the same amino acid. Another vocabulary term you might hear with this genetic code is that it's unambiguous. And what that means is that if you know a three-base codon, that will only encode one amino acid. There's no variation there, there's no ambiguity. Hence, it's unambiguous. If you have, let's just say, A, C, G, then we have A, C and G down here, that is threonine and nothing else. Whenever you have ACG, that will encode the amino acid threonine. And so this genetic code is something that has been conserved throughout much of evolution and nearly all species have this universal genetic code that they share. The nice thing is that for the MCAT, you will not be responsible for memorizing all of the different codons and what they represent. You'll have to be able to work with codons and what happens when there are errors in replication or when a mutation occurs. And you'll have to be able to recognize a few very important codons. One is AUG. That codes for methionine, which is the start codon. That is always the starting point where the ribosome begins to translate your mRNA into a protein. It will always start with methionine, and that will be AUG. The other ones that you need to know are the three codons that signal stop, the stop codons. And those stop codons are going to be uh, UAA, UAG, and UGA. There's a mnemonic for this, and the mnemonic that people like to use is you are annoying, 
you go away, you are gone. So U-A-A, U-G-A, and U-A-G. You are annoying, you go away, you are gone. And that's a good way to recognize these stop codons when they come up. So as long as you know the AUG start codon and that it represents methionine, and that you have the three different stop codons, UAA, UGA, and UAG, then you're good to go as far as specific codons and what they represent. Remember that it's degenerative, that multiple different codons can encode the same amino acid, but remember also that it's unambiguous. There is no ambiguity. When you know the three bases in your codon, then you are able to pinpoint exactly which amino acid it will encode, and that reduces some of the guesswork and greatly it increases the adherence of the ribosome to the desired instructions of your DNA. And so this is essentially the genetic code. And once again, you're not responsible for knowing what all of these codons represent. Only know the start codon and the three stop codons, and then how to read a chart like this, and features like the degenerativity of it and the unambiguous nature of this. And this is something that applies throughout millions or billions of years of different organisms. And it's something that is at the heart of life and how DNA can produce proteins that are essential to eukaryotic cell function.